Hey pals, welcome to another Nick Squad review. I apologize it's taken me so long to come out with a Team of the Year players review. I really wanted to get used to my Team of the Year players and get quite a few games under my belt with them to give you guys an accurate reflection of how they play in game. Now I've used this setup uh, for not too long, maybe for about five or ten games, but this will be my first Team of the Year squad builder, and I'm looking at the costs of this, and this squad builder might be in the 13 million price tag, so that's pretty scary that this squad costs this much. Now, I usually start with the top and work my way down, but you know what? I'm going to start with the bottom and work my way up this time. And of course, that brings us right into Team of the Year, Manu Neuer. Now, there's no real need to look at his stats. I mean, that way you can at least see how much I've paid for him and uh, how many games I've played with him. We're at 17 total, and he is, without a doubt, the best keeper in Ultimate Team 14. And to be honest with you, he may be the best keeper I've ever used in any Ultimate Team. I think the only one that eclipses him is actually my man of the match, Manu Neuer from Ultimate Team 13 last year. I obviously don't have that card anymore. I actually sold it for 400,000 coins on FIFA 14 Ultimate Team, so I had to take the money uh, and run. The guy just wanted the man of the match, Neuer. Anyways, neither here nor there. This card, I have no idea what he's going for right now. I got him right at the bottom of the market, I hope. Um, I don't think he's gone any lower than that, to be honest with you. Uh, but he is bloody incredible, guys, and I would highly recommend him. I'm planning on using him and really all of my other Team of the Years all year long, so it's a worthwhile investment for me. Team of the Year Ramos. Team of the Year Thiago Silva. This is a tough review for me because one of them is really, really good in one formation and bad, and the other one is bad in that formation. The other one that is bad is then good in a formation and this one, etc., etc. So I haven't been able to find a team that makes them both play well. They both don't play well together in a two at the back formation. Uh, it just doesn't work for me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because they're both not insanely strong or insanely tall and, you know, they, they don't work well together in a two at the back formation, but. This really brings out the best qualities in them. Uh, if I could choose, though, I would actually rather have Sergio Ramos in the middle uh, in, as a center center back. Uh, logistically and chemistry-wise, it's just not going to work, so I have to stick with this. Out on the wing, he's still fantastic, but I think his best position for this type of a formation is center center back. Now, Thiago Silva. This is the card that doesn't do too great for me in a two at the back formation. I know a lot of you guys are going to be watching this video and say, well, Nick, you just suck at the game. It's just me, guys. This is just my opinion, so that's, you know, the beauty of opinions. Everyone has one. You can watch my videos, take what I say with a grain of salt, and base your own opinion off of your own experiences and what I have to say. But in my opinion, Thiago Silva doesn't do the greatest in a two-at-the-back formation. I'm going to keep testing it out. I'm going to keep trying to get the best of him in every formation, but this has been his primo spot for me so far. Three at the back formation, at right center back, he is just a god, guys. I mean, and of course, look at his stats, right? It's 87 pace, 95 defending, 91 heading. Look at his in-game stats. They're incredible. Medium high work rates. And because he's not so tall, it means he's even faster uh, running up and down the field. And another quick note on Sergio Ramos, uh, one of the best center backs in the game that I've used. You guys know that before Team of the Year came out, my favorite center back in the game was the regular Sergio Ramos, and a close second was Vincent Company. And of course, this Team of the Year version of Sergio Ramos is just outrageous. He's an unbelievably good player, and uh, I believe he goes for about five or 600k on PlayStation, so really, really worth it. I don't know if his price has shot up yet or not. The second informed Matweedy I was worried about, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that regular Matweedy and the informed Matweedy are two of the worst cards in the entire game for me. Just a disaster. I'm happy to say that the second inform is slightly better, but still pretty woeful, guys. I, I feel like Matweedy is going to need a Team of the Season card in the 87 to 88 range to really make him good. Now, the man, the myth, the legend, the Ballon d'Or winner... Pfft, just stats alone, what I had to pay to get him, uh, just an outrageous, outrageous player. I've used him for a ton of games. I've had an up and down time with Ronaldo in that he gets chances galore, creates chances, but the percentage of them that go in is, is a little stressful for me. Um, and you can see that. 17 games, 7 goals and 3 assists for someone that has 98 pace, 97 shooting, 98 dribbling. Yes, you know, in before all the trolls say, Nick, you suck. 
I'm not the greatest FIFA player, but he just hasn't translated for me at left forward and left wing. I'm going to keep working at it. I'm never going to get rid of this card unless some loser hacker tries to take it away from me. But otherwise, I'm keeping this card all year long. I do it with Ronaldo and Zlatan's Team of the Year cards or Team of the Season cards. I keep all year long. I've done it every year. This will be no different. So I'm hoping I can get better with him. We're going to test out Ronaldo at left mid. Uh, I know, again, you guys are going to say, well, Nick, it's such a waste having all that expense and all that talent all the way out at left mid. But why I put him here for this squad is, first of all, so I can fit them all into one team. But second of all, I'm going to try him at left mid in 4 one 2 and 2 as well. I want to see if having him at left mid, similar to having him at left wing, will give him more space to roam, give him more space to attack into. I use Stefan al Sharawi at left mid, and he's a god because he has all that space to work with. So I'm hoping Ronaldo does that as well. Uh, I apologize, guys. I know that this review, uh, squad review, is taking a long time before I get into the games. But I want to give you guys a concise and, and proper review of all the players. And I'm going to do this for every Team of the Year squad review. So be ready. Now, this move here is also a bit of a test. Uh, Verratti is someone that I really like in real life. I love the way he plays for, for uh, PSG. He's, you know, a little bully on the ball. He's aggressive. He's passionate. He's such a good player. So young. So much potential. And I wanted to try him in a whole bunch of different positions. I've tried him at center defensive mid uh, for about two games. And he is fantastic. Plays really well. And he has something like 88 long passing and 86 or 87 short passing. So... I feel like as a fulcrum of my team, he might be very, very good in terms of feeding the ball out to Ronaldo, Ibra, Mayuka, Lucas, and even back to my defensive mids. I know you're looking at this and thinking, Nick, you're such a pace, W-H-O-R-E. He's been a phenom. And I know at first glance you're going to think, oh yeah, I just picked him because of his pace. Have a peek at his stats. He is bloody incredible. Some of the goals I score with him do not indicate that he has 66 shooting. Let me tell you that right now. And four-star weak foot, four-star skills makes him amazing. Makes him still very usable. I would have loved for him to still have a five-star weak foot because then it means really anywhere he pops up on the field, I can use any foot to pass and shoot. Makes him deadly. My hero. Let's not go into an entire diatribe of, of why I love him. You guys know that. Uh, you know, obsessed with Zlatan's uh, best card. I've been doing that every single year in Ultimate Team. I've always had his best card. I love him. You know, he's he's the greatest player ever, in my opinion, in terms of a striker. Uh, the flair, you know, the, the cockiness, the arrogance, everything about Zlatan, what he does off of the field for charities, etc., etc. I just love Zlatan, so if I had to choose... So, my review on Zlatan is eh, a little rocky. His second in form seemed a little bit better for me. He's finally come good. Uh, there was a point where I think I was at about 17 games with Zlatan, and he only had about eight goals or something like that. So, I was getting worried, thinking, what the heck did they do with this Zlatan? Why is he so much worse than my second in form? But he's coming good now, guys. Um, I'm scoring hat tricks, you know, doubles. Uh, I had a game where I scored five goals with him. So, he's coming. He's... He's coming along. Again, though, the poor guy cannot head a beach ball into the ocean. 87 heading, it might as well be 7 heading. Biggest recommendation for Zlatan, keep the ball on the ground. I mean, sure, you can send lob balls to him. He'll settle them with no problem. But if you're going to be spamming crosses to him, my opinion, my experience, he doesn't score shit in terms of headers. So, as long as you avoid trying headers with him, you should do really, really well with Zlatan. Now that's the end of part one, boys. My apologies. I didn't want the player review to be 15 minutes long. Uh, I went into a very long description with each Team of the Year player. So hope you enjoyed part one. Don't worry, I won't make you wait for part two. It's coming right now. Enjoy the gameplay in part two because some of the goals are just outrageous that we put in the net. So please like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the flip side. The flip side be in part two. Bye-bye.